Hello, I'm Keith with the Trombone Shop at Schmidt Music, back with another instrument review for you. And today I've got a model that was announced boy, a year or more ago and that we hurriedly ordered but it took a while to come in. We have it in the shop, specifically the Yamaha YSL8820D Zeno large board tenor trombone with cut bell. Now we've had a chance to spend time with their small board cut bell, with their bass trombone cut bell. We've been waiting on the large board tenor. I'm um, especially knowing what our experience was with the other two ends of the spectrum. I really wanted to see what this experience was like and I'm really excited to share it here. So I'm going to take a play on this, then you, we'll talk about it afterwards. I'm gonna be playing everything today on my trusty Bach 5G. <laughs> Detachable flare bell trombones have become, in a lot of ways, almost a mainstay in our world right now. Now, of course, not everybody is using these models, but they're becoming more and more sought after, and we are seeing a little bit higher percentage of folks who are looking for these instruments, not only for the transportability of the instruments, but for the playing attributes as well. And most of the major manufacturers and custom makers have begun offering options with these cut belts, the detachable belt flares. Yamaha was one of the last major makers to get on board, but of course, when they did, they are gonna do it the Yamaha way, in other words, really, really well. So I've talked in the past about my experience with the 891ZD and with the 835D, bass trombone, small bore tenor, bass trombone. But like I said, I was really curious to see would the attributes I noticed with those other two sizes carry through with the Zeno, the large bore tenor as well. So just talk through a few of the basics here. So we have a yellow brass bell. This is eight and five eighths inch. Um, of course, with the cut bell here, a uh, standard uh, yellow brass tuning slide here with the standard slide, uh, standard Yamaha rotor, open wrap, um, the standard Yamaha uh, large bore tenor hand slide, 547 bore. Um, here, yellow brass outer tube with yellow brass crook here, nickel silver oversleeves. 
it's the exact same Zeno design we've seen, just with the cut bell. And so thus, the question is, how much of a difference is that cut bell going to make? And for me, it's quite a bit. Um, I've, I've talked in the past, what I experienced with the Yamaha, or frankly, just more in general, what I think the cut bells do. We can go into length of it again, it changes the resonance, right? We're changing the mass, what the resonating points are. Generally speaking, I think that the cut bells provide more character, more stability. They, depending on the design, they can open up the, the resonance or at least give it a different kind of resonance to it and you know a different weight and projection with it here, all of which are attributes that I feel like I've seen the trombone world kind of moving in anyway. So, um, with a lot of makers, and this is something I've been wondering with Yamaha, and I think I've confirmed it, with a lot of makers, when they're going through and we're doing the detachable bell flare, the cut bell, with the additional weight of the collar, oftentimes they are using a lighter gauge material on the bell flare, on the bell stem, to compensate for that additional weight. Um, in other words, you know, we're we're keeping the overall resonance, you know, kind of weight balance mass the same. We're just changing where that point is, but. Um, there are, you know, there are a few makers who are not doing that. Um, with Yamaha, and I've not been able to confirm this, with Yamaha, my suspicion was that, no, they were not changing the gauge of the material, and they were just adding on the bell stem. I did have a chance to go through and weigh this bell section compared to a standard Zeno bell section. The difference wasn't a lot. It was a couple of ounces, but... It's noticeable. I, first off, you can feel it when you're holding the instrument, but more importantly, you can experience it when you're playing. I think that this model, this cut bell here, adds a just a new dimension to this model. Um, the Yamahas have been renowned for their, their just overall ease of play. They are very accessible instruments. I would say in the trombone shop, the Yamaha Zenos tend to work better overall for a, a larger majority of players than any one other one instrument. Now, it doesn't mean that it's always the right choice, but it ends up being in the top two or three choices more often than any other one model because it's a very, very balanced instrument in terms of its sound, its resonance, its airflow, all of this, but there are some downsides. The big thing we hear about Yamaha is it doesn't have enough character. The sound is just kind of plain, it's simple. It doesn't have a lot of life and resonance to it, right? I've argued that with the 891 and the 835, the cut bell added to that, that life, that resonance, that character, I think it absolutely does the same thing here. And playing it side by side with the standard Zeno, I just feel like I can open up into this instrument more. And the result is, again, a more complex sound for me. Um, I love it. It feels like it has a lot of weight and projection, but it's not heavy. I still felt like I could be delicate with the sound when I needed to, but when I, especially when I gave it a little bit of gas, it just, it really opened up in this wonderful way without getting overly strident. Um, and it was a sound I felt I could really, really lean into. Um, now, it does feel, because of that, it does require a little bit bigger, broader airflow. So it's going to be leaning in terms of kind of the overall approach. It's going to be leaning a little bit more towards like an SD Shire's Bach kind of setup where you have to have a little bit larger air concept, a little bit more energized airflow with a little bit more um, support behind it. But the result, I think, is what a lot of players feel like the Xenos have been lacking, which again is just that that resonance, that depth of sound, that character, all of these ideas. Um, I thought, again, it played wonderfully. It had, it, it, it slotted wonderfully. The upper range played played great. I, I tried to showcase a few different points getting into the lower register, into the trigger register. I think that you know, that lower trigger register pops in a really great way, but not in a, again, not in kind of a thin, pointed kind of way, but again, with a lot of mass, but with a, this, with this support where you could get this, this wonderful type of growl in the sound that we oftentimes want to have in that lower register without it, again, it getting really, really, really edgy and strident. Um, so it's great. I, I'm really impressed. Um, and I, I, I'm not surprised. I've been anxiously awaiting this because again, I've really loved the other models with this as well from Yamaha. I think this is a great option as well. A couple of little sticking points. Yamaha still does, has not, at, as of this time, does not have a case designed with this here. So the instruments come without cases. Now, in the scheme of things, 
not the worst thing in the world. It's, it's slightly annoying for us as players, but there are, of course, any number of wonderful cut bell case options out on the market. Um, and fingers crossed, again, I haven't heard this, fingers crossed, maybe Yamaha will have a new cut bell case design in the works as well. I think that'd be a really nice addition. But that one little quibble aside, I think, it, again, it's a great addition to Yamaha. I think it's going to be a great option for folks who want to have that kind of Yamaha experience, but a little bit more. And what I'll be really curious to see is, does this change the perception of folks and how they view Yamaha, what Yamaha has been bringing to the table, especially in the the classical side, our large four tenors, our bass trombones. Is this going to be have a little bit of a shift? I don't know, but I will be anxiously watching. So as always, I appreciate you watching the video here. If you have any thoughts about what you heard today, what I talked about, maybe you've already gotten to play this model here. Maybe you're playing another one of the Yamaha Xenos. We'd love to hear about your experience. Feel free to share them in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, please think about subscribing to the channel. We'd love to have you as a part of our community. Hit that notification button so that you see when we have new videos coming out. And of course, you can find the Trombone Shop on Facebook and Instagram. As always, thanks for watching.